is correct. And today I'm going over barefoot shoes versus orthotic slippers. Super maximalist shoes, crazy orthotics. Do all these make your muscles weak? Do all these cause bunions? I see all these videos making claims. Hey, shoes cause bunions, shoes mess up your back. Caveman walk barefoot. What are the lies, the myths, the secrets of barefoot walking? I'm gonna tell you in this video, we're gonna go over all the research, my experience seeing thousands of patients and we're starting now. So I know that was kind of a sensationalist intro. I actually love barefoot walking. I do it a lot myself. I've seen patients have great results and I've seen patients suffer. There's so many lies, there's so many myths out there. Nobody's really rooting this stuff in studies. People use sensational books where somebody goes and runs with a hidden tribe in Brazil. And spoiler alert, those guys get smoked in races anyway. If you look at the world record setting marathons, all these guys wear super shoes now. They're making all the records, not barefoot walking. They use it with super shoes. For example, check out this clip of the world's best marathon runners. These are the guys with the most fit legs. This is not deniable. So it's kind of funny, like people accuse me of selling expensive shoes, but the reality is I don't sell any of my own shoes. And number two, some of the biggest affiliate offers I get are to sell barefoot shoes, which are not cheap if you look at any of them being advertised. Myth and lie number one, barefoot shoes are suitable and recommended for everybody. They say, hey, these things straighten your legs. They strengthen your muscles. That's the myth. The reality is the suitability of barefoot shoes varies greatly. People have different biomechanics. Some experience benefits right away. Some immediately have problems, ligament damage, injuries, like right off the bat. And then the next claim is, hey, you just haven't given enough time, but my patients are actually developing stress fractures and damage. A relevant study to this is Hollander in 2015 in the Journal of Foot and Ankle Research highlighted that even individuals that wear minimalist shoes have a high variability in their walking over a long period of time. There is a need for a personalized approach. I'm gonna tell you my experience with barefoot walking shoes. I actually have people come in and walk and I look at their hips, I look at their knees, I look at their feet. People who have straight hips, straight knees, straight feet, who are already healthy, that's who benefits barefoot walking. If one knee's turning in, if one hip's turning in, as you're walking, you're gonna load your muscles so unequally that you're gonna have shin splints, stress fractures, posterior tibial tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis right away. And most of the patients I see are older people with joint problems, with peripheral neuropathy. That's kind of the problem with the barefoot shoes. If you're perfectly straight already, that's when the strengthening works. It's kind of like lifting weights in the gym. If I put the squat rack on my bar and I'm tilting unequally, I'm gonna damage myself. But if I'm already perfectly straight and have perfect technique, I can really load that up and my body can handle it. That's a good way to think about barefoot shoes. But let's focus on getting you straight. The key is how your foot positions, supination, neutral, or overpronation. In this example, this is a neutral foot. Look at how straight his ankle, his foot is when he runs. This guy will do great because he has a neutral foot, probably won't have as many issues. But take a look at this person. This is overpronation. Look at the bend of the leg compared to the ankle, compared to the flattening of the foot. I can tell you right now, this person will have Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, and ball of the foot pain. And that's just the foot. What about the knee? What about the hip? There is actually software that can measure the angle of your hips, your thighs, your knees, your feet. And we utilize some of this motion capture technology to calculate this. When it's green, you might do okay. When it's red, you're probably gonna have some muscle strain and some overwork. Myth and lie, barefoot shoes completely eliminate injury risk. The myth is switching to barefoot shoes will prevent a lot of running related injuries. The reality is while barefoot running can alter how you walk and run, what they do is they shorten your steps. You take shorter, choppier steps. So there's less bend through your hips, less bend through your knees, less bend through your ankles. For a lot of people, that extreme range of motion is what causes tendonitis or joint problems. For those people, and especially younger people, that makes a huge difference. Other types of people, if you're stiff, if you weigh a lot, you're gonna develop ball of the foot pain, heel pain, plantar fasciitis pain potentially. A study in 2013 by Ridge in Medicine and Science and Sports and exercise found that bone marrow edema 
in people's feet, so that means bone swelling, dramatically went up in the first month or two while barefoot running. So there is a lot of bone risk. It's not that you're risk-free. It goes back to point number one. If you're already healthy, strong, and flexible, you're gonna tolerate this a lot better. Those shorter, choppier steps won't load your joints as much but you will have less cushion and more impact injury. There are definitely undeniable differences between shoes and barefoot walking. The posture, you're more hunched forward with barefoot shoes, you have a higher cadence and you have more of a forefoot strike. With shoes, you have more of a heel strike, you take longer steps, it puts more stress through your knee and you have a more vertical posture. So it lets you top out quicker, but barefoot, leans you forward and makes you lean on the front of your foot more. So for example, if I'm running and I have a barefoot shoe with hardly any cushion and I land on it, there's less impact. I'm more on the front of my foot. It can cause more stress, less cushion. Whereas with the big shoe, it allows me to take longer and theoretically more dangerous steps, but I have the eight to 12 millimeters of cushioning it's less likely to cause bone damage, less likely to damage ligaments. There's definitely a trade-off, but it's impossible to say what is best for anyone without a biomechanical exam. Myth in line number three, barefoot shoes naturally improve running form. The myth is that simply wearing barefoot shoes will automatically improve your running form. Barefoot running does encourage more of a forefoot strike. You take shorter, choppier steps, and it does force you to consciously focus on your technique, which is good. You can develop some bad tendencies with supportive super shoes, whereas barefoot shoes do make you walk with shorter, choppier, more focused steps. Choppy is a poor choice of words, but essentially with shoes, you take longer, wider steps, whereas with a barefoot, you lean more on the front and you take shorter, more focused steps. That's a better word. You're putting less stress on your hips, your knees, you're getting less of that rotational stress, but you are getting more vertical compression with less cushion. That's the trade-off. Let me know in the comments if that doesn't make sense. I know this is a pretty confusing topic and I can make a more detailed video. The Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness in 2016 by Fuller showed that barefoot running does change your strike pattern but it doesn't necessarily alter injury risk. A popular chart to show is the heel strike pain. And that's true, it can create more of a contusion on your heel, but that's not what causes plantar fasciitis. It's really the rotational stretch that causes it. It's not that downward impact. So from what I see, plantar fasciitis, it's not that downward spike, but by changing the way you walk, it can make you more conscious of how you roll through your foot. And that's a great thing, but that by itself is not proof. Another thing to consider is how much pressure is on the heel. When you have no cushioning, you hit with no cushion and no support. But if you have a cushioned layer on the bottom of your heel, that will soften the impact. So even though there's a heel strike, it's because you tolerate it with the extra eight to 12 millimeters of cushioning. That's the benefit of the shoe. It's not necessarily a bad thing. One crazy thing that I see is the toe box. This has nothing to do with barefoot or maximalist shoes. If you get a very supportive shoe like a Hoka or a pair of Brooks or Saucony or Ortho Feet, they will have more of an opening on the left than on the right. The right just means it's a pointy dress shoe that has nothing to do with a barefoot shoe or maximalist shoe definition, but that's kind of how they trick you in a lot of these marketing promotions. Myth number four, transitioning to barefoot shoes is quick and easy. The reality is it's not easy. It can take a long time. If you're young, healthy, and fit, you will transition. A study in 2018 by Johnson in the Gait and Posture Journal highlighted the need for gradual transition. And we're talking months and months. I have a great guide on a walking program, how to start a walking program if you're older, if you're stiffer. But I always tell people, start slow for about six weeks. That's how long it takes for your ligaments to adjust, to get a little bit more flexible. So you don't wanna do it all at once. If something's hurting, you wanna dial it back and ease into it. I'm not saying barefoot running's bad, but there is an adjustment phase. Studies show you should start very slow and consider about six week time increments. Ligaments and muscles will take time to adjust. You will have less cushioning, so your bone marrow edema and stress will develop through the bones. So it's something to consider. Start with slow distances. Myth number five, 
Barefoot shoes are a natural way to walk or run. We were cavemen. We were meant to run and walk. Minimal shoes are the closest to a natural state. The reality is our ancestors hardly lived any years at all and developed crippling arthritis. They were shorter. A lot has changed. We sit in chairs, we sleep in beds, we do a lot of stuff differently. Our ancestors, while they did walk more barefoot with less supportive shoes, they developed physical conditioning, more biomechanics to do so over time. Nature is a great magazine. A study in 2011 by Lieberman on the biomechanics of foot strikes over large populations noted that even amongst barefoot people, there was a huge variability in running gait and foot strike. Even though they were barefoot their whole life, there's still a huge genetic difference in how they walk and run. There's no specific numbers, but I would estimate 70% of my patients overpronate about 15 supinate. It's rare. I would say about 30% of people are straight like this, and it's young, healthy, fit, athletic people. Most people that see me are overpronated. They get plantar fasciitis. They get Achilles tendonitis. They get bottom of the heel pain. They have inside of the knee or MCL pain. And they have hip pain, lower back pain, and sciatica pain. It's extremely common, and there's a lot of variability. So here's kind of the big secret. There are pros of barefoot shoes. They encourage shorter, choppier steps that don't load your body as vertically. There's a lot of good studies that it is a more natural biomechanical foot strike. It does strengthen lower extremity muscles, and gradually it makes you think about your gait and your muscles do get used to walking. There's an improvement in sensation. You can feel with your feet and adjust, and it can help you prevent injuries, but there is a risk for injury or biomechanical injuries, specifically stress fractures through your bone, there's less cushion. If you have a bad back, bad hips, tight hamstrings, tight knees, and you try to do this too aggressively, you're going to have a lot of joint problems. And I see that predictably with a biomechanical exam. If I do a biomechanical exam and somebody has issues, the vast majority of the time, they will have a hard time adjusting. Not all the time, but the majority of the time. There's limited protection for biomechanical issues. Ingrown toenails, bunions, hammer toes. Specifically, if you have less cushioning in your foot, if you have less flexibility, you can't absorb this damage, and it can lead to foot-specific injury. Most of the people that come in with foot problems can't get through that adjustment period. You want to ease into it. Do a little bit of barefoot walking during the day, but wear good supportive shoes, good supportive orthotics to let your joints, your muscles heal. And the big secret is you have to get a biomechanical exam. If you're struggling to adjust to this, if you're not a healthy 20 year old or 30 year old fitness influencer who has an affiliate deal for barefoot shoes, it's not gonna be the easiest thing in the world, even though barefoot walking is great once you adjust to it eventually. The way I talk about adjustment is biomechanical exam, see where you're injured, see where you're tight. Just like a dentist straightens a tooth, I would tell people start with a shoe that holds you a little bit straighter, start with a soft pre-made orthotic, then potentially a custom orthotic, and as you're already straight, that's when more and more barefoot walking makes sense because your knees are straight, your hips are straight, your back's straight. It's then easier to adjust. And then if that's not working, you want to come in to see a podiatrist like myself. And if you're in Michigan, I would love to see you. I usually follow with pre-made orthotics that I have available for free in my office in most cases to start off with. And then we have a 3D printer that can print custom orthotics a lot of the times for very cost-effective rates, much cheaper than the pre-ordered ones even online. What I do is I do a biomechanical exam. I check your hips, your knees, your thighs, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. I bend your ankles up and down, your big toe joints up and down. I see where it's tight. What kind of adjustments do we have to make? And the thing is, you can adjust them from appointment to appointment. You want to look at your leg kind of like a dentist looks at a tooth. You don't want to straighten that tooth all at once. You want to take that tooth and get used to it a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter, a little bit straighter. And when your foot is now straight, that soft tissue gets used to it. Your hamstrings, your thigh muscles, your hips, your lower back over a couple months get used to walking straight. That's when walking barefoot makes sense. That's when strengthening your muscles makes sense. At first, you want to just get used to walking straight and your muscles will adapt. Using this method, virtually 100% of patients that come see me do see improvement and there's no real risk. The cost does not have to be high. What's a 20 or 30 or $50 pre-made orthotic when you're weighing surgery as a result? And here's the real big secret. All of this stuff is around for a reason. 
reason, because it works. There's happy people and there's unhappy people with all of these. You just have to use it correctly. And the big secret with orthotics are nobody really makes a lot of money on these anymore. Compared to like a $20,000, $30,000 surgery for a hospital, why would the hospital advertise a pre-made orthotic? Why would the medical system advertise a $20 orthotic when they can make money on a $30,000 surgery and a patient for life? It's something you have to think about. And that's why there's not that many studies for orthotics anymore. The reality is, in my opinion, orthotics work amazing. This stuff all works. The barefoot walking works, the orthotics, the good shoes, they all work, but they have to be used at the right time and the right sequence. I go over my favorite shoes, my favorite orthotics, and my condition specific guides. If you're in Michigan, come see me. But the big secret as well is you have to get a biomechanical exam. If something's hurting when you wear your orthotics, you have to get it looked at. Is it a bad knee, a bad hip, a bad foot? You might have to massage. You might have to use a foam roller. You might have to get physical therapy. You might have to get an injection. You might have to get shockwave therapy. Ungunk your body, start walking straight. And if you wanna walk straighter, check out my 30-day guide to transform your health. You won't regret it.